Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lucy, and together with my co-founder, Matt, I am thrilled to be sharing Kestrix with you all today. We are using mass thermal image capture and AI to scale building retrofit. Is your house cold and are your energy bills skyrocketing? If the answer is yes, you're not the only one. Globally, 10% of CO2 emissions come from heating and cooling the buildings that we all live, work, and play. With 80% of the buildings that will exist in 2050 already standing, the world needs to retrofit its buildings for energy efficiency at speed and at scale. Now the problem is, is we are not going fast enough. To reach net zero by 2050, we need to retrofit 90 million homes globally every single year. Today, we're doing just 25% of that. So the question is, why are we moving so slowly when the technology that we need to insulate our homes, insulation, is already widely deployable and available at scale. Part of the problem is data. Take it from our first customer, a top five UK social housing provider. For them, the existing building energy efficiency data that's available, so the EPC system in the UK, simply is not good enough to plan or validate retrofit work on at scale. Instead, they are needing to do manual on-site surveys, which as you can probably guess, are really slow and cost a ton of money. Public policy is actually catching on to the fact that EPCs are not fit for purpose as well. In fact, just recently, the Climate Change Committee published an open letter to the UK government urging for the reform of domestic EPCs to support delivery of net zero. What they're saying is EPCs need to be more quantitative. We need to be measuring space heating demand intensity of homes, so how much heat is actually leaking from them. So this brings us to the question, how can retrofit's data problem be solved so that we can actually scale this thing? So we've founded Kestrix to solve exactly this problem. Kestrix uses mass thermal image capture and AI to help portfolio property owners benchmark energy performance so they can plan and validate retrofits. So how that works in practice is we're using a network of image capture providers who are capturing both visible and thermal spectrum images. At scale, they're going to be doing this cities at a time. We're working with these three partners that you see here on the, on the left right now. Next, we take all of that imagery and we put it into our proprietary AI, which is then using our algorithms to assess the thermal performance of those buildings. And then we're presenting that report alongside retrofit planning and validation tools that we're also building out to our customers using our web platform. So what's really happening under the covers? We're taking this, all of this imagery and we're building a unique 3D heat loss map of the built environment. But what the real uh, important bit here that differentiates us is the algorithms that we're developing that take that map and for each property pinpoint exactly where the heat's leaking and by how much and thus enabling us to to inform those retrofit plans. And we were able to do that in less than a minute of customer time per property. Whereas today, customers are taking two or three hours of on-site time per property to do those assessments and then having to analyze all of that back in the office. So of course, we're not the only uh, company out there who are trying to solve the retrofit data challenge. But Kestrix is the only one bringing together real-world energy performance data and scalability in order to solve this challenge, rather than going house to house, as you see in the top left of this diagram, or modeling off uh, low, lower quality existing data sets in the bottom right. Now, we have a fantastic team to solve this problem. My name's Matt and I have 20 years of a tech leadership experience. 10 of, you, of that was at Google. I grew up helping my parents renovate the homes that we were living in. So I've learned a lot about building fabric and energy systems. I have a degree in engineering and computer science with a specialist in computer vision. And I'm also a certified drone pilot. And my name's Lucy. I'm the commercial co-founder of, of Kestrix. I'm a two-time founder with direct experience commercializing sustainability data and SaaS products. 
Additionally, I have degrees in both urban planning and sustainability. At Kestrix, we're thrilled to be supported by excellent brains trust as well from across the property industry, retrofit policymaking in the Welsh government, and engineering and computer vision. Now, retrofit tech represents a massive financial and carbon abatement opportunity. So for retrofit, we've identified a total addressable market here of 133 billion US dollars, of which we believe we can capture 650 million in revenues by year 10 of operation. From a carbon perspective, retrofit represents a five gigaton abatement opportunity from a total addressable carbon perspective, and 10 megatons of reduction are possible with Kestrix. So we're thrilled about the traction that we're already seeing at Kestrix after just a few months of operating. We've already secured a pilot with Clarion Housing, who are the UK's largest social housing provider, which is a paid pilot. And even more than that, we're thrilled to announce that we have been successful in an application for a 240K government grant in a consortium with Peabody, who's the third largest housing provider, social housing provider in the UK. Lastly, we have a letter of intent signed from a large UK energy utility. Today, we're asking for your support in our 300,000 pound angel round, which is closing in June. We are going to use this round to complement the grant winnings that we have uh, and further develop our, our AI for image interpretation for retrofit. So I'll leave you with this. With Kestrix, we are moving away from an old world of retrofit, one where data collection is laborious, overwhelming, and opaque, and generally is contributing to retrofit being rolled out way too slowly. With Kestrix, we're bringing you all into a new world of retrofit, one where because of better data, everything is streamlined, actionable, and accountable. And as a result, we can actually scale this. We're getting retrofit with Kestrix, and we really hope you'll join us. Thank you for listening. Thanks for a very interesting pitch and nice meeting you both. I think this is the first time that we met. Nice to meet you. Uh, yeah, I think this is a really interesting space, especially recently there are lots of like positive noise made around the building environment when it comes to regulation across the Europe. So there's a market opportunity there, which is huge. But building environment is really, really complex value chain. So just help us understand a little bit better in terms of who do you actually sell into and for each one of the customers group, what is the real value proposition there? Is it better data quality, I guess, kind of like additional revenue stream, or is it better serving their customers or cost reduction? What is it actually for each one of them? So I'll talk first about our kind of beachhead segment just to illustrate that, and we can talk a little bit about where we're going to go in the future. So. As you saw in the presentation, um, our first customer segment are UK social housing providers. Now, this is a great place to start. Not only do they own lots of housing stock in the UK, about 20% of the housing stock is uh, owned by social housing, so between four and five million homes. Um, but they're under a lot of pressure to retrofit from the government. You know, in terms of net zero, often we're talking about 2030, 2040, 2050. Retrofit is already happening today, and as a result, housing associations especially are, are struggling. Um, just in terms of why they're going after retrofit, they are under a lot of regulatory pressure. So you have the minimum energy efficiency standards starting to kick in as soon as 2025. Um, in addition to that, you have the Social Housing Decarbonization Fund, um, which just a few weeks ago, they announced the second wave of that 800 million pounds in funding for the sector. And what we're seeing there is that data, and rather the lack thereof, is just creating a bottleneck for them. So they're looking to focus their resources and time on actually retrofitting, on actually installing this stuff. But instead, they're needing to waste hours, not to mention um, pounds, actually going out and collecting this data so that they're, they're not doing sort of prey and spray retrofit strategies. Um, so we're, we're really coming here to, to cut down all the time and money associated with that process of, of collecting data. Now, we're starting with social housing providers in the UK, but as Matt iterated in the presentation, we're looking to do this at the city scale. So think rather than going home to home, capturing entire cities at a time so that this data is available not only for social housing providers who own the assets, but the financiers of retrofit, the installers who are actually putting this stuff into houses, um, everyone has used for better data. Perfect. 
And when it comes to data capturing, because I also looked at some of the drone companies in the past, which is like super exciting space. As a sector itself, it's sort of like going through that curve of market takeoff. And you mentioned you identified already three partners in the drone space. Can you tell us a bit more about the existing partnership, how they operate, and what's the technology readiness on their mm -hmm. side? Yeah. So the, as you as you mentioned, uh, the drone world is coming going through a, a lot of change at the moment, both in terms of the technology, but also in terms of the regulation. Um, and across those three partners that we're working with, two of them are quite traditional drone operators. Right, so they send a team with a, in a van with a drone or multiple drones, and then they go and fly those missions manually around the area uh, that they're targeting, and that's relatively expensive. Right? The, uh, but one of the partners, Hero Tech 8, um, is one of the companies uh, in the UK now who are, have got a beyond visual line of sight uh, authorization, just for some subsets of the UK landmass. And what that means is that they can actually deploy drones without uh, somebody being there. And so what they're doing is they're installing these, um, uh, these boxes that they've built, uh, which where the drone lives, and as a customer, we can go into their web portal, uh, enter what the data that we need, um, and then that drone gets tasked to fly off, capture the data, return back to its box completely automatically. And that is the kind of partner that we're really looking eventually to, uh, to work with because it massively reduces the cost uh, and it's increasing the coverage uh, that we can achieve uh, across the country. Right, so it's more a drone in the box, mm, which is a like box. That's exactly ideal right. partner yeah. that would yeah. be for you. Yeah. And in terms of the frequency of such projects delivered to your customer, is it more a one-off project based on the retrofit need, or is it more a continuous real-time monitoring, etc. in the future? Yeah. Probably not today, but something in the future as a business model. Yeah, so right now, the pilots we're doing, of course, are bespoke projects, uh, but our vision is that uh, we can operate more like a mapping company um, so that we are taking um, th these 3D models of the whole built environment really every heating season um, and then making that data available on demand. Uh, and there's a number of advantages to that. Of course, that reduces the cost dramatically per property. Uh, it means that we can uh, capture the data in the right conditions, for th particularly for thermal imaging where the temperature difference needs to be at least 10 degrees between indoors and outdoors. So it's really limited to the winter months. Um, but the benefit of that, of course, is that if a customer wants this data in May, let's say, they don't have to wait until October or November to shoot the imagery. They can just have that data. And then finally, we need that repetition because we want to show not only uh, to help customers plan their retrofits, but also then validate afterwards and by constantly uh, taking those updated images, we can give the before and after on every project. Oh, really interesting. And I think you also mentioned about the AI algorithm. Mm -hmm. So where you are in terms of the development, I guess that's mostly focused on thermal image recognition mm -hmm. and interpretation. So where you are in terms of that development journey? Yeah, so it's uh, early days right now. Um, and part of, um, well, the main focus of the grant that we've, we've won is really to develop the, the thermal image interpretation algorithms. Uh, and a lot of the work is going to happen next winter, so next thermal imaging season, where we're going to collect a lot of uh, data, uh, baseline data, which we can train uh, machine learning models on, uh, which will then uh, enable us to sort of really develop the, the, the guts of those algorithms uh, into next year. But already this year, there's a large portion of uh, alg um, training that we can start to do on more of the visible spectrum side to start being able to automatically um, take measurements of properties from the imagery that we're taking. I mean, measure, physical distance measurements and, and areas of roofs and that kind of thing. And then we can layer on the thermal imaging uh, at that time of year. Perfect. Um, in terms of the pilot, the exciting like, Clarium pilots, can you talk a little bit more about it in terms of, to the extent that you can disclose, in terms of the success factors, the milestones you're tracking and the timeline you're looking at, etc. Is there anything that you can share with us on that front? 
Yeah, so actually it's really exciting. I think they maybe are flying either today or tomorrow, so it's a very recent thing. Um, but yeah, the way, that, the way that it's working is rather than going and mapping all 140,000 properties that Clarion has, which would be great, but maybe a little bit over our heads at the moment, um, we're starting with a subset of properties. So these are, are south of London, um, and what we're doing is working with one of the drone partners listed there to basically capture these. And what our systems can already do is actually basically turn those images into 3D interactive models that you can look at on a dashboard. Um, and so that we can work iteratively with the customer, we're basically uh, labeling these in the way that, that we imagine um, they would want them to look. And uh, it's, it's very much a co-design relationship where they're saying yes, no, maybe. Um, and yeah, we see it really as a pilot, but as a as a as a first step with them because they uh, they're obviously a really amazing long term partner um, who's leading in, in the retrofit innovation space generally. Really interesting. Good luck with that. And final final question in terms of the team. You mentioned that you are a two X founder. So what experience that you learned from the past will help on this one specifically? Great question. I don't get that one very much. I would say the biggest thing I've learned is how important it is to listen to your customers. I think it's very easy to get excited about technology, but the most important thing is to consistently be not only asking your customers, but showing them things and, and uh, making sure you're not you know, showing them something that's cool, but showing them something that really helps them achieve their goals. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're really keen on, on co-development, iterative process. Things will change a lot between, uh, between now and when we scale. Oh, that's music in my ear as an investor. <laughs> thank, you. thank you for this.